Good morning. It's Monday, October 26. Time for Monday Manna. You know, clothing is interesting. Fashions change. They they cycle. One thing I notice um, is the width of men's lapels on their jacket and the width of men's ties. Uh, they'll be they'll be wide and then they'll be narrow and then they'll go wide again and narrow again and they kind of cycle over the years. We're in somewhat of a uh, of a narrow to medium width right now, but it'll change. Uh, someone said, if you just hang on to your old ties, then they'll come back into fashion. That may or may not be the case. But I think the Lord God has ideas about clothing too. In Isaiah chapter 61, there's a verse I want to read. Verse 10 says, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness as a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. Now, one of the several biblical metaphors of salvation is that having and wearing clothing appropriate for coming into God's presence is necessary. We have to have the right clothing. And that picture is drawn a couple of times in Scripture. Now, the clothing for God's presence is not something that we can make for ourselves. We can't run down to the store and purchase it. Uh, it's clothing that is and must be prepared and provided by God. Thankfully, he does this for us, his people. You know, you go back to Genesis, Adam and Eve tried to dress themselves in fig leaves after they had sinned and realized that they were naked, but uh, the, the fig leaves weren't going to work. That, that didn't, it didn't work. And the Lord God, their creator, their maker, had to kill two innocent animals, and he made, uh, made coats of skin and clothed Adam and Eve from Genesis chapter 3. I think it's verse 7 and maybe verse 21. But the, the Lord had to, had, to, had to clothe them, and it's the same for us today. If we try to come to God dressed in our own works of righteousness and the, in the things that we've come up with, we can never make it because Isaiah 64 and verse 6 tells us our own righteousness is as filthy rags in the presence of a holy God. So the Lord must provide the clothing for us as our scripture verse that we read uh, early said, he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness. In the New Testament, Jesus told a parable of the wedding feast for the son of the king who was being married. And there was one man who wanted to participate in the wedding feast, but he tried to come into uh, the banquet hall in his own clothing. He had disregarded the wedding garment that had been provided by the king for all the guests. So you read that story, uh, Matthew 22, the, the, the king had given clothing to everyone to wear to the wedding, and this man ignored that. He, he didn't want to wear it for whatever reason. And so he wore his own clothing. And I'm sure he could come up with excuses. Well, I didn't have time to change or whatever, you know. Uh, but what, what happened was in verse 12, when the man tried to get in, the king said, how did you get in here not having a wedding garment? And the man had no answer. He was speechless. And as a result, he was judged. He was bound hand and foot and, and thrown in to outer darkness. There will come a day when we will be participating in the marriage of the lamb. That day is coming. Uh, and, and the the lamb, his bride, the church, us, must be dressed in fine linen, clean and white, the righteousness of the saints, John describes in uh, Revelation chapter 19. But again, this righteousness that we have, that we receive, will come from him. It's not something that we come up with on our own. God has, Christ has, and will provide for us the righteousness righteousness needed to enter the presence of God. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 10 tells us, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works. There are certain items of clothing we wear to certain places or 
or certain events. And there are items of clothing we do not wear. We're encouraged here and we're exhorted by Isaiah. Put on your beautiful garments, Isaiah 52 says, and be ready and be prepared to meet our Lord and King. Amen. That's God's word for today, Monday, October 26. I hope it's a blessing to you. What will you do with it? Let's take a moment and pray and ask the Lord to help us to be appropriately dressed for what he has for us. Father, we come to you. We're thankful for our garments of salvation. We're thankful that you've given to us the clothing that we need. Lord, even though it seems fashion changes and clothing uh, changes, you don't change. And the garments of salvation don't change. What you've given to us and prepared for us are eternal. And we're thankful for that. We're thankful for the righteousness that we have in Christ. Lord, clothe us appropriately for what you have for us to do. Lord, I pray for your people. Would you continue to strengthen and uh, and help us, Lord, those that are facing sicknesses and troubles and challenges this week. Father, I pray you put your healing hand upon them and restore and strengthen. Lord, give provision to those that need provision, blessing to those that need blessing. Lord, help us. We're your people. We call on you. You said we could, and so we do, asking for your help. Lord, we trust you. Our hope is in you. You're our helper. I pray your blessing on your people today. In the name of your son, amen. God bless you, church. Good to be with you for a moment this Monday. I pray you have a great rest of your day, and uh, you keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. Amen.